Hello and welcome back to our Melee AI tutorial series. In the last episode we introduced the Fight Director, an actor which can take control of the uh, fight and determines which enemy should be attacking next based on a score system. Now we haven't set anything like conditions up for those scores so that's what we're going to do in this episode. But before we go ahead and start adding conditions in, I want to fix our debug uh, where it shows the numbers to update that when the numbers do update. At the moment, they're fixed. So let's go ahead and do that. Now on the fight director, we are adding these widgets like so at the very start on begin play. What we want to do is store a reference to each of these widgets so we can update them all later on. So um, we want to take this widget and return value. We're going to store in a map here or an array here rather so we can use it later on. <clears throat> so, so let's do a new uh, map called enemy widgets and we want a melee enemy to be the key. You click on the icon and change it to a map like we have done before and the value for this is going to be a widget. In fact, it'd be this type of widget which is debug melee AI object reference. So debug melee AI object reference and hit compile now we can add this into our game hit get and then choose add we'll insert that in before we do the adding and setting of the widget and what we're going to do here is we're going to add here the enemy which is going to come from the enemy instance that we're using and plug that in there and the widget is going to come from the return value there. Hit compile. Now this all looks a bit messy here, but we can tie this up by converting this to a uh, local function. So I'm going to select all of this here. And we're going to create that to a function. So right click on this and collapse the function. I'm going to call this one add debug widgets. And there it is. So if I double click on this now, it may look still a bit messy, but we can tie this up even further. So let's change this up. So the first one here, we've got to, we can disconnect one of these. As the first one we're going to need is just the enemy instance. And enemy instance will go into the add here. And we don't need to keep dragging it all out over there because we can delete that and delete this and drag that enemy instance out as a separate entity here. So I can get enemy instance. I'll hit compile first. Then get enemy instance. And that goes into there like so. And that will go into there like so. So now that have lines being dragged all over the place, we can just do this instead. Then we go along here. I want to Take this return value, promote to a local variable. Uh, widget, we'll do lock, oh, hello. Lock underscore widget, and that be plugged in here. And I disconnect that from there, I'll plug that in there like so. And then at the end here, I can disconnect it and just drag my lock widget out and plug it in. The add here will come from the enemy instance, so I can just right get out here and get the enemy instance and the target again is going to come from that same enemy instance node and that should do it hit compile and we're good go back to the event graph and uh, we don't need the input pin we get rid of that and there we go so a lot neater and what's doing happening in here is we are now adding to a, a map array here called enemy widgets which stores the enemy widget attached to its instance so when we want to upgrade update this we have to make a new function to update the widgets so we do update debug widgets and we're going to add a new input for this and that'll be the enemy instance that we want to update and we're going to drag out our enemy widgets choose get and then choose find the find key is going to come from our parameter and that's going to find the widget attached to that enemy. So drag that from there 
and we want to set and you'll see fighting grade fighting grade it can come from enemy grading again we do find and enemy instance will go into that again and that will go into set fighting grade hit compile and that's it there all we have to do now is tell it to update the debug widgets when we want it to and that is at the moment only going to happen on the trigger attack so once we get to the end here drag out update plug that in and the enemy instance is going to come from this over here hit compile and we're done so now if i push play these numbers should change after one of them attacks there you go and that one changed to 1.874 changed again that one changed again so now we're going to move on to how to add conditions to our attack score so at the moment it's just doing a random value so i'm going to add one condition in here which is going to be based on whether or not they're in front of us or behind us so what I'm going to do here is on our set time by event after four seconds it's going to trigger the attack and find the highest grade but before it does that we want to do some doing some stuff to our grades to recalculate them accordingly so I'm just going to drag this out over here and we're going to add a new function here called recalculate scores and another function called score by position now score by position will be called inside of recalculate scores i'm going to drag that in and plug it in like so i'm then going to my event graph and when i do trigger attack i'm going to drag recalculate scores into it so before it goes on to find who the highest top grade is it's going to recalculate the scores for all the actors inside our list once it's done that it'll find the highest grade and then do what it needs to do so in recalculate scores it's going to have multiple conditions so the first one score by position which is this one here but then we have maybe another one here another one here another one here another one here and so forth so let's go into score by position now the way this works is we'll take all our enemies and we're going to calculate their whether they're facing us or not facing us so to do that we need to drag our enemy list out and choose get from there, we do a for each loop and plug that in to the start. For each enemy object that comes out of this, we want to get their forward vector. Now, why the forward vector? Well, the forward vector is their direction they are facing. So we want that there. Now, we also want another one of those. So copy that down. And the target for this one, though, is going to be the player character. So get player character. Now, to do our calculation, we're going to use something called a dot product. So do dot product with these two vectors. Now, dot products are quite hard to explain uh, visually like this, but essentially, um, the more they're like, the number will be closer to zero. The more they're dissimilar, will be closer. So the more they're like, will be closer to um, one. The more they're dislike, will be closer to minus one. Sorry, my bad. So if they're behind us, it'll be closer to one because we'll be facing the same direction. If they're behind in front of us, they'll be closer to minus one because they're in front of us. So we can use this dot product and use it as a multiplier um, to calculate that. Now to multiply this, we're going to make sure it's normalized. So drag this out and do normalized to range. The range minimum is going to be minus one. And the range max will be 1. So now the output for this will only ever be between 0 and 1. And what I'm going to do here is add a little offset to this. So I'm going to add a float. And add in, let's say, 0.5. Okay. So the lowest value will ever be 0.5. And the highest value will ever be will be 1.5. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply that by their current grading. So drag enemy grading map out and choose get. And then from there, find the find node. Now for this, we need the enemy object reference, which comes from our array element there. And 
from this find, we're going to multiply the float together with that there. And once we've done that, we need to add it back to our map. So from the map, do add. The value goes from the bottom there. The blue enemy reference comes from the loop and the execute line will go into the loop as well. So for each enemy, it will go around and do that. So hit compile, go back to recalculate. So recalculate is going to come out with a new score and reset all the scores. Then the event graph is going to do the recalculation and then find which one has the highest. Now after it does a recalculate, I'm going to tell it to update the widget. So after this, I'm going to drag update debug widgets. Uh, actually, let's put this on score by position. So then we can use the instance from our loop. Okay, so that will update the debug widget for that. So hit play and 3.728. And if it's behind me, it'll be 2.037. Uh, and it will recalculate it according to which one is which. So let's add another enemy into here. Like so, and add it to the fight director. And let's hit play. So at the moment, the one on the left should be fighting me. But if we turn around, they recalculated, and the one... should then attack. So you saw a value go higher than five there, that's because it recalculated the score. So I'm gonna try and get one behind me, one in front of me. So the one in, and let's get them spaced apart a bit. So the one in front of the player should attack me more often than the one in behind the player. Got to get out of the way. I'm trying to skim apart is tricky. So the one in front should always attack more than frequently than the one behind me. Now notice it's going by the actor's location, not the camera. Okay, so if we want it to be using the camera's rotation, that's totally fine as well, we could do that. So if we go into Fight Director and go to buy a score by position, rather than using the player character's forward vector, We'll use the camera's forward vector. So we get player camera manager. And you can get the camera uh, rotation. And then from that rotation, we can get the forward vector. So now it'll go by the camera and not the actor. So if it's behind the camera or facing a different way from the camera, the value will be higher or different. Apologies, one little error uh, I found whilst testing. We need to flip the dot around. Um, I've got it the wrong way around. It's if it's different, it becomes closer to minus one. Uh, so on the dot here, we want to change that, and multiply that by float. And multiply it by minus one. So if it's one, it becomes minus one. If it's one, it becomes one. So to test that out, we'll do a print string in here and plug in our new dot value. And now we should see if we're if it's in front of us, the value should be higher. Uh, if it's behind us, it should become lower. So that's 0 0.8, and that should become now a negative number. There you go. So that's correct. So now if we add more enemies to this, so let's add another enemy, let's add three. And go to our fight director and add those enemies to it. And let's hit play. Um, the print string is still in there, I realize, but never mind. So now they're all going to recalculate their scores and attack based on their position they are to the player. So the one behind the enemy, the player character should always be non-sensified, uh, desensitized to actually attack. 
It'd be most of the ones in front of the player that'll be attacking. And that's the case. Okay. So it's pretty basic, but it's one condition we put in there. So there are other conditions we can do. We could do conditions based on whether or not they're attacked recently, uh, whether or not they're aggressive sort of type characters, uh, whatever it may be. Um, but what I'm going to do in the next episode is focus more on getting spaced apart and preparing to attack you a bit more. What we want is that if they're behind you, to step away from you a bit more. Okay, so the location they are behind you is a bit further off camera. So your focus is always on the enemies in front of the player while we're the ones behind the player. Okay, so you're going to move them slightly back and give them a bit of a larger radius to look for. Um, and that's it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've covered uh, something that you want to learn today. And uh, you start seeing how we can get some interesting results from the conditions. Um, if you want any particular condition covered, let us know in the comments below. And we'll look into making a video on it. Thanks very much for all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. It's thanks to you guys that are helping me get this content made and keep me doing it. So thank you so, so much. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and, and make sure you hit that like and everything else. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.